In this video, we're going to discuss three methods of navigating in WPF applications that do not require any code. The three controls that we will use are the standard tab control, the OPC WPF nav button control, and the OPC WPF nav menu item control. To start out with, I've created a WPF application and have added the OPC systems controls to my toolbox. I've also selected the 4.0 framework for my application. The application consists of a main window and three pages that I have added previously. For the tab navigation, we will not be using any of the pages, just the main window. So let's start out by adding a tab control to our main window. We'll select the toolbox and we'll scroll till we find our tab control and we'll add that to the main window and size it appropriately. You can see that we start out with one tab item in our tab control. We can have multiple tab items and there's two different ways we can do this. If we go to our properties tab we'll see that we have the items collection and we can simply click on the collection and select add and that will add an additional tab item to our tab items control. We can also set a header for that particular one. The first tab item has a header of tab item 1. So let's just make this tab item 2. And you can see now that we have an additional tab on our tab control. That's fine, and we'll just select OK there. We could also copy any one of our tab items here. Copy it in the XAML code and just paste that back in. And change the item header to tab item 3. So now we have three tab items in our tab control. We can also nest tab controls within our tab items. So we have tab item 3 selected here. We come back to our toolbox and we can also select another tab control and add that into the existing tab item. Now we've got an additional tab control within the item of a tab control. Tab controls can also be set up so that their tabs are located or oriented in various uh, locations such as top, left, or right, or bottom. So we'll take this additional tab control here and we'll change the tab strip placement to the left side. We could also set that to the right side or to the bottom. And you can see that that tab control is now in the lower portion of the screen. This allows you to put together some really nice navigation where you can navigate within sections of your application. Let's go back and add some content to our tab controls. So let's go to tab item 1 and let's just add a simple label control into each one of these and I'll put that about in the center and we'll call that uh, change the content on that label to label 1 and we'll just copy that and we'll change the next uh, two uh, items here. We'll select the label and we're going to copy that. So let's go to tab item 2. We'll paste that and change that to label 2 and we'll go to tab item 3 and we'll select tab item 2 down here and we'll just paste another one in here and call that label 4 and on this tab item right here let's select tab item 2 and that has a con an existing tab item within it and a grid and we'll just copy that tab item and we'll paste that back in here and change that to tab item 3 and change the label here to tab item 3 and then the label is our content. We'll change that to label 5 and also we'll change the name of that to label 4. And we're all set here. Now let's run our application and see what we have. So here we are in tab item menu 1, tab item 2, you see the label changed here, tab item 3, We've got label 4, and if we select the sub tab here, we have label 5. Now let's switch from tab items to the OPC WPF nav button control. So let's clear out our main window here. We could nest uh, nav controls, we can mi mix and match them, but uh, for clarity, we're just going to uh, clear out our main window. We'll remove all of those tab controls and their contents. We're back to our main window now. And what we want to do here is add a couple controls here. But first, I'm going to separate the main window using a grid column here. And from our toolbox, let's select a frame item. Put that on the right-hand side of our screen. Size that appropriately. And on the left-hand side of our screen, let's add a stack panel. And that'll contain our buttons. We'll size that. 
And the next thing we want to do is go down and we'll select an OPC WPF nav button. And we'll add that to our stack panel. And we can do that just by double clicking on it or we can drag and drop it. And let's size that. Then we'll change the content of that button to page one. And there's our content there. And now let's go to our OPC systems properties here. And for the frame name, we'll use frame one. And for the page name, we'll use page one. You can see that in our window, our frame's name is frame one. And then from over here from our solution explorer, page one, page two, and page three. Now let's take our button and copy and paste that twice. And we'll go in and change the content. We can change that in our properties windows, or we can change that in the XAML. So we can just change that to two here and change it to three, change the name here. We've got the name nav button two, nav button three. So let's change the page name here to two and the page name on the third button to three. So now each one of our buttons is going to, when we click on it, load the page that they're associated with into this particular frame, which is frame one. Let's run our application and see what we have. So we'll select uh, page one. And there's our page one content, page two, you can see page two in there, and page three. So very easy to set up some navigation there. And we can go beyond that, we can nest pages within frames within pages. So let's go over here and in page three, we'll add a frame here. We'll select our frame control, and we'll just put that in the lower right hand corner here and that is frame one here so let's change that to frame three to match up with our our uh, particular page that we're using and let's go back to our main window and we'll add another button we'll copy and page that page three button in there and we'll just call that page x and the content down here we're going to change that frame to frame three and we'll load page one into that frame. Now let's run our application again and we'll see if we can click on page one, page two, and page three. If we hit page X now, we're gonna load page one into that frame on page three. Now let's try one other thing here. Let's load page one and we'll hit that page X button. Page three is not loaded into the visual tree at this point. So we're going to get an error, load page from frame could not find the frame. So keep that in mind. You're going to want to make sure that the frame that you are looking to load the page to into is actually in the visual tree, which means it's loaded and running. Okay, we'll stop from here and we'll move on to the third and final way of navigating with the OPC WPF nav menu item control. Okay, we've cleared out our buttons and now we're going to go with a menu navigation system. So we'll go to our toolbox and we'll add a menu to our left pane. By the way, we've taken out, taken out also the uh, stack panel because we won't be needing that for now. And that's now in our left pane there. We'll align that a little bit better. And let's make this a little bit wider here. And to that menu, let's go add a menu item. And we'll add a header to that uh, menu item. And we'll just call that menu. Now below that, we will select our collection of items. And we're gonna add to that a menu item for page one and for page two and three. We'll accept that. And then we're gonna make a little change here. So we're currently using a standard menu item. If we go up here and we see where our dashboard assembly is loaded, that has a namespace of my. So we're just gonna use that my namespace here, like my and colon OPC WPF nav. And we'll add that to our menu item. And we're just gonna copy and paste that part of our our uh, items there. So now we've changed these standard menu items to the OPC WPF nav menu items. And we can now add our navigation to that from our OPC systems properties. So the frame name again will be frame one and the page name for the first one will be page one. And we'll do the same thing for menu item two and three. Okay, we've updated our three menu items, OPC WPF nav menu items, and now let's run our application and see what we have. We'll select our menu and page one, menu and page two, 
and page three. There you go. You can see how easy it is to use three different types of navigation all without having to write any, uh, any specific code. So very easy with WPF and OPC systems to put together some pretty, pretty extensive navigation systems within your own applications. If you have any questions or comments or would like to view more information about our product, please visit www.opcsystems.com.